Today, you are going to learn how to play one whole step higher on the trumpet in one week. Sound unbelievable? This is installment three, or trumpet lesson three in this series on how to play higher in one week. Let me give you this friendly warning. This is not gonna be a tutorial, a trumpet lesson about long tones. Or lip slurs. Yeah, so I'm not going to give you that generic vice that you already know or that you likely have already found on YouTube or that you likely have heard from your trumpet instructor, especially if you're a trumpet major at some college or university. You're not going to get that here. You already know it or it can be easily found on YouTube. Before I continue, please make sure to subscribe to this channel to get amazing and unusual trumpet lesson tutorials. By the way, also lessons for tuba, trombone, cornet, flugelhorn, French horn, baritone, euphonium. Yes, it's all here at Trumpet Sizzle. So subscribe right now and hit that little bell notification so you'll be alerted anytime I put up a new video. So if you've been following along and watching the other trumpet lessons in this series, You'll notice that each trumpet lesson said you could gain a half step in range in one week. But if you listen carefully at the beginning of this video, I told you you could gain an amazing one whole step in one week. You didn't miss here, and I wasn't fooling around. This particular trumpet lesson is going to focus on technique. Yes, a lot of brute strength is required to play skillfully in the upper register on the trumpet or any brass instrument. However, you cannot forget about technique. Technique is essential. Unfortunately, so many people are using the wrong technique to play and excel in the upper register of the trumpet or any brass instrument. Okay, I can hear you say, Kurt, get on with this. What is this amazing technique you keep referring to that will give me one whole step in one week? Okay, you ready for the technique? You ready? Are you ready? The technique I'm going to share with you right now is called lip roll-in. Roll-in. R-O-L-L-I-N. Lip roll-in. And it really amazes me how many people don't know about this and how many people don't do it. And for those who know about it, they still don't do it. I can't tell you how many times I've gone on YouTube to see people start their playing and not roll in. And it looks something like this. The lips are just like this. Your horn comes up like this. And that's it. There's no rolling. So if I'm going to play in the upper register, it's going to go something like this. And what you just heard right now sounded like total crap. Why? No roll-in. But you heard at the beginning of this trumpet lesson video, I killed it on Sesame Street. Do you look like this when you play in the upper register of the trumpet? Watch the lips carefully. <laughs> Lip 
Let me actually roll in and show you the difference so you can hear it and see it. Want to see it again? Now, let me go ahead and apply that technique of rolling to playing the horn. Remember, this could be applied to tuba, trombone, French horn, baritone, euphonium, cornet, flugelhorn, E-flat cornet. I put the mouthpiece up to my lips. If I'm going to play low, I'm going to keep a low C setting, what I call a low C setting. It could be a low B-flat setting if you're playing a bass clef instrument. A low C setting. Jaws drop down low. More of a pooch in your lips. Not much rolling. kind of look probably looks like that in the mouthpiece oh, lips apart teeth apart with the roll in a couple of things have to accompany this particular technique the jaw needs to be up not not down like in the low C up teeth almost touching lips up and rolled in rolled in more extreme now. <laughs> Extremely rolled in. If you can master this technique, you will be able to play one whole step higher in one week. Too good to be true? Again, this is not a trumpet lesson about building strength to gain one half step in one week. It is a technique, and once you learn this technique, your range will go up one whole step. For those of you who are trying to count, that's two half steps in one week. Now here are two strategies that can help you gain this technique. Number one, use a mirror. Yes, you heard right. Practice this technique in front of a mirror. Or maybe you can borrow your mom or sister's makeup mirror. You know the little round one that flips around and one kind of magnifies and you can just set it on something? So use a mirror to see what's going on and try to shadow and mimic exactly what you saw me do in this video. You're going to roll in. Strategy number two, get with a professional trumpet instructor who can show you this technique in person or via Skype. Okay, so did you learn something today? If you did, here's a reminder again to subscribe to this channel. There's a lot of amazing content and actionable material that you can use starting right today. Now I want to turn it over to you. Are you going to use this amazing trumpet lesson technique to skyrocket your range in one week? Well, we're waiting. If you're going to try this technique, could you let us know in the comment section below? And what would really be appreciated would be after one week of trying this technique, how did it go? Let everybody know in the comment section. You're just going to be helping other trumpet players and brass musicians when you do that. Again, leave a comment. This has been Kurt Thompson along with TrumpetSizzle.com. And by the way, if you want amazing tutorials, exercises, practice devices, and practice aids to help make you a better musician, a better brass musician, a better trumpet player, then you need to go to trumpetsizzle.com. And the last word, at the end of this video, you're going to see my top rated trumpet lesson video on the top two reasons why you can't play high at the end of this video. Go ahead and click on it. It's one of the number one rated trumpet lesson videos on YouTube. And you watch that video and you'll see why. You're going to learn something. This has been Trumpet Lesson 3, or the third installment in the series on how to play your trumpet higher in one week. By moi, Kurt Thompson. I'll see you in the next one, my friend. On the trumpet in one week. The trumpet technique that I'm going to show you today has really helped me improve my range, actually more than a half step. But we're going to let you guys experience the half step increase in range in high notes on your trumpet by using this one amazing technique.
And thanks to this one amazing technique that I'm going to show you today, I am able to play extremely well in the upper register of the trumpet. Now let me give you this warning. We're not going to be going over the same old, same old that you already know about. Lip slurs. Okay, let me try some high notes here. I'm playing lip slurs. Long tones. Okay. Whew. Okay, now I can play high. Just did a bunch of long tones. You're not going to get that same old advice that you've already been given, long tones and lip slurs. It can only take you so far. You are going to get an amazing, unique technique. I'm Kurt Thompson, TrumpetZizzle.com. Let's dive into it right now. So are you one of those trumpet players that want to play higher? Yeah, me too. You're going to love this technique. I'm going to give you the good, the bad, and maybe the ugly of this technique. It's so simple. You're going to be doing Roy Stevens no pressure system palming. Make your hand like this. Not like this. Not like that. Like this. Give me a high five. Your hand stiff and flat. Now I want you to turn it over. This is my left hand. You're going to turn it over. You're going to make it like a shelf. Almost like a shelf. You know, like you could set something on. See? It's a shelf. You could set a mouthpiece on there. See? Just like a shelf. Take your horn, put it on that shelf. Do not allow your fingers to do this. Even a little bit. Your hands and fingers need to be stiff and straight, almost like popsicle stick. Lay the horn on your hand. Don't grab onto it. Just lay it on like a shelf. If you're not careful, it could actually fall off. That's how you want to do it. It's just like a shell. Here we go. I want you to put it up to your lips. Now, here's parallel. You can have a little angle on it, which will help seal the vibration. This is parallel, approximately. Here's an angle. Put it up where you normally would play and play a little C. Easy, right? Yeah. Step two in how to play harder on your trumpet for this one week technique. On your palm again, and I want you to play two notes. So far, so good, right? Yeah. Seems like we have an echo in this room. Step three. You're going to add a note. So, so far we've done the low C on trumpet. We did the low C to the G on trumpet. Now we're going to add a third note, the C. This has to be slurred and it has to be about mezzo forte to forte, which means medium loud to loud. Remember, hands like a shelf. Lay the trumpet on the shelf. Parallel, you can add an angle to it. You want to play as high as you possibly can. Now, you're going to keep adding notes until you can't play anymore. Let's add a note. Now we'll be going to E. You think you can go to an E? It's not that hard, is it? Do you think that you can go to an E? It's not that high, right? Yeah. Shelf. Horn. Yeah. 
Did you notice something? Each time I start down on the low C, we went low C, low C, G, low C, G, C, low C, G, C, E. Each time that you repeat it, you always start back on the low C. Getting to that high B flat is going to be quite an advanced move for most of you, but some of you may be able to get it. That was high C doing the Roy Stevens palming no pressure system. If you can get up to high C like that and it was loud, you really have strong chops. You really have strong chops. Yeah! You want a half step increase in your range? Seven days, my friends. Seven. Seven days. Every day. Pretty cool, huh? So now I want to turn it over to you. So did you learn something? Are you actually going to try this technique? Are you actually going to try it for seven days? If so, let me know in the comment section. Love to hear from you. Especially if you tried it for seven days and you got that high range happening. The last word, if you want exclusive tutorials, lessons, and strategies that you can only get here, you gotta go to TrumpetSizzle.com. I have something that's gonna help you get better. Tutorials, lessons, DVDs, practice aids, practice devices, exercises. I'll see you in the next one. to some demonstration with some of the other instruments. What if you don't play trumpet? What if you play French horn? So for French horn, I'm gonna hold it like this. Let me kind of back up a little bit. I'm gonna hold it like this. And just, you can see how I'm holding it with my hands, just palming it. All right, let's see what we can do with trombone. your phoneme and I got one hand down here and I'm not going to grip it and um, actually this is a baritone and I got the other hand like this so I'm not gripping anything like that I'm not able to pull it in and I'm just going to start um, on a lower note this guy you're probably going to have to get a little bit more um, innovative with. Um, is, this is too heavy. What is it like 25 pounds almost just to try to do what I did with the baritone which was pretty light. Um, if you could fashion a way to hang it or with a little bit of rope from some somewhere in your house uh, that would be great. If you have a tuba stand um, I'm going to just maybe try to wing it and do it on my chair. Um, let's just see what happens. Um, so I'm on a chair here and let's just see if I can just work it enough just to show you that this can be done. So it's on the chair. I've got to lean like this and I'm just going to keep it. I'm not, I'm not, I'm going to put my hands up here. So I'm really not going to use any pressure. Are the wheels turning right now? 
So this would actually be better if you had a tuba stand and you just bring your mouth up to it and don't even touch it. But you could see that I was using no pressure just with the tips of my fingers. If I had to choose one thing to really explode my progress on any brass instrument, especially during this time where we're all kind of stuck at home, you're not at school, you're not in your rehearsals, you're not in your ensembles, I have one thing that I would recommend that you could do right now. The sizzle pull. The sizzle pull. is the logical evolution of the peat. For many of you that have, let me get out of the way so you can really see it clearly. There we go, should, should come into focus a little bit better. For many of you who have the peat, this is the evolution of the peat. It does everything that the peat does and a lot more. It's like the peat on steroids. It has another, what, 10, 15, 20 um, variations that you can use. It's solid metal. It has some cushion beads on it, not to tear up the inside of your mouth. This is the sizzle pull. You can get this along with a tutorial for it. If you didn't want to embark on the best number one rated amateur improvement program in the world, which is my 16 week brass upper register course, the new revised one if you're not ready to take on that and tackle that which actually that's the one that you should really be doing but if you just wanted to try something that's easy not going to take a lot of time but will give you almost instant results over anything else that you could try i mean i've looked at everything that is out there anything that you can buy anywhere this will do it the sizzle pull This is a pull. Today, you are going to learn how to play one half step higher on the trumpet in one week. This is a trumpet lesson on how to play higher notes on the trumpet. The trumpet technique that I'm going to show you today has really helped me improve my range, actually more than a half step, but we're going to let you guys experience the half step increase in range in high notes on your trumpet by using this one amazing technique. And thanks to this one amazing technique that I'm going to show you today, I am able to play extremely well in the upper register of the trumpet. Now I should warn you, I'm not going to be giving you generic, same old advice that you've heard time and time again, maybe even here on YouTube, definitely if you're a music major, of practicing long tones, practicing the Schlossberg, blah, 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 you already know that, so I'm not going to be talking about that here. I'm going to be giving you this amazing technique that will work in seven days. You probably already know who I am, but for those of you just watching me for the first time, I'm Kurt Thompson of TrumpetSizzle.com. Let's dive right in to this amazing technique. You know, a long time ago, I was like you, struggling to increase my range, my accuracy, my power, 
and the real biggie, the endurance, the ability to last an entire rehearsal or performance. And yes, yeah, some of it does work. You know, I tried the long tone thing. In fact, I still play long tones. I still do that, but not as a way to really jack up my range. I mean, I tried that. I had trumpet teachers that told me to lip buzz and mouthpiece buzz 45 minutes a day before I even touched the horn. I tried all that stuff. I didn't really get much out of it, folks. And we're just a few days away from St. Patty's Day, so why not tilt the odds in our favor? I got all green on because this is my lucky day, but it's going to be even your luckier day when you get this extra half step and range in one week. This is not a joke. This is the real deal for improving higher notes on your trumpet in just one week. This is quite cool. You just have to do it. All right, here we go. First, you are going to be taking the trumpet mouthpiece and placing it in the center of your chops the way you normally would. You're going to start off on a relatively easy note. Say, for example, middle C. Now watch carefully. I'm going to repeat middle C going to my left, and this will probably be your right, but I'm going to repeat it several times as I slide the mouthpiece across my chops to my left corner. That's probably your right. Watch. Now bring it back to center and go to the other direction. This way. Crazy, right? Crazy like a fox. Now let's try going up to D. Right in the center, over. Bring it back to the center and head the other direction. Wow! You're probably saying, hey Kurt, what's so amazing about that? You are adding a different stress in a different placement on the chops that you're not used to doing. It's going to throw you for a little bit of a loop. And then watch the range start to happen, my friend. So we did C, we did D, and you want to keep going as high as you can until you're no longer able to go across each direction. Let's fast forward. Let's pretend I'm trying to do this on a G above the staff, which is getting pretty high for this technique. Center. Over. Getting tough. Back center. We're going to go this direction. There we go. What? No. You didn't ask me right now to try this on a high C. It's a crazy, amazing, wild, quirky technique, but on a high C? Huh? What? Ah, oh, what the F. You want to hear it on a high C? It's going to sound hor horrible. It's going to sound god awful. Let's try it. It was the green hat, the green, the look of the Irish, the reason I was able to do this on a high C. Now, this technique is an amazing technique and you will get one half step in one week on your trumpet. This has been a trumpet lesson on how to play higher on trumpet. And actually, it will work for trombone, tuba, French horn, euphonium, baritone. Now, will this amazing, powerful trumpet technique allow you to do this?
Maybe not, maybe so. But you will get the one half step increase in your range on trumpet or any brass instrument. I promise you that in one week. So after going through this one amazing technique with me and having observed how to do it, did you learn something new today? Are you going to try this technique? Why wouldn't you try this technique? Well anyway, if you did learn something new today, make sure to subscribe to my channel, Trumpet Sizzle. It's easy. Just click on that rectangular red button that says subscribe below, right below. Maybe it's right there. It's right there. Just click on it and you'll be automatically subscribed. I'd also hit that bell notification. That way, every time I upload something you might be interested in, you'll get a notification of it right away. And by the way, if you want exclusive training, courses, tutorials, practice aids, exercises, all for brass players, trumpet, tuba, euphonium, baritone, French horn, cornet, flugelhorn, then head on over to trumpetsizzle.com. Trumpetsizzle.com. Now, I would like to turn it over to you. Are you going to try this amazing, powerful technique to jack your range up in one week, one half step? Either way, let me know by leaving a comment below right now. This has been a trumpet lesson video on how to play higher notes on the trumpet, specifically on how to gain one half step in range in one week. I'm Kurt Thompson. I'll see you in the next one. Trumpet lessons for under $10. Sound too good to be true, right? Well, this is Kurt Thompson, TrumpetSizzle.com. And this past week, pretty much the first week of April, I've been trying to put together a bunch of tutorials that are short, quick, and easy for this time when a lot of you are stuck at home. And my motto is, if you're going to be at home, why not try to find the silver lining and practice a little bit more so that when society comes back to normal, you're that much better of a player. Is that too hard to follow? I hope not. <laughs> anyway, I put together some very, very quick and easy and short tutorials. Actually, the easy part is for some of them, but some of them are actually uh, difficult. So, but I outlined that for you. So if you're looking here, uh, this is the um, new collection that I have on my site. And we're just going to go through there. In fact, I'm going to show you how to find it. Uh, let's just pretend that um, you're typing in my website instead of uh, instead of clicking on a link. So let's pretend that, uh, let's just say you are at YouTube. Because I'll put this up on YouTube. It'll be on Instagram and my Facebook. Let's just say you're here, you're kind of messing around, right? And uh, you're like, oh, okay. So I want to go to Kurt's site and check out these very cheap uh, trumpet tutorials. So you, you would type in trumpet sizzle.com boom now when you're here where do you go after that well what I would do is I would click the little bar here and especially if you're on your phone you'll see this it's it's up on everybody's um, mobile version so you click that and then you go to all of uh, Kurt stuff now you could go down here too um, th that that gets you there too but I would click all of Kurt stuff and then I would click new because these are all brand new people just go to new. So it says it's just self-explanatory, right? Price low, high, old, new. You want new to old. If you click new to old, since I just literally put these up this week, uh, the first week, well, first and second week of April of 2020, all these are going to come up and it'll be very easy to browse through these. So click this. Boom. And you get right back to where you were at the beginning of this video. And you can just browse through this. There's about a good, almost 20 of them. And um, now some of them, there's about four or five that are in the under 20 category because they're longer and more in-depth tutorials. But there's a good, um, I don't know, close to 20 that are under 10, 10. And most of these are $7. Hello. So if you're sitting at home, and you're just playing through some of those little small pieces that you see in pet band, you know, at your high school band, those little tiny, tiny, you know, rectangular sheets that are about uh, four by six or five by seven. And you're messing around with that. 
and you're going through a couple of scales and maybe you got some sheet music from your band and you've been doing that and you're kind of not really getting anywhere you're, you're probably not even maintaining you might want to think about getting some of these tutorials so you can at least be getting better again if you're stuck at home and let's face it right now we're at the middle of april 2020 and schools across the u.s get out at two different times you have your schools that get out right at the end of may and then you have your schools that get out at the middle of june which one are you in it doesn't really matter because do you think that they're going to let you go back to school here around may 1st well, let's just pretend that you do are you going to get anything done no so uh, my guess is you're not going back to school for the remainder of this year and for those exceptions where i'm actually not right about that what are you going to get done you're not going to get much done so my advice to you is to go ahead and take the initiative and start getting some of these devices and obviously um, you won't be getting within six feet of me to get these and you can still get better I spell it out pretty clearly in these tutorials they're very quick and easy tutorials so we'll scroll through these very quickly and let you get on your way um, now some of these are advanced so let me repeat actually this is not a repeat let me say this for the first time if you're you know 13 years old and in seven, finishing up seventh grade if it says advanced, like right here, it says advanced, don't get it. <laughs> You're not gonna be happy. This is gonna be too difficult for you. So beginning, beginner videos, I would assume you're probably fifth grade up to about um, maybe seventh grade. Uh, intermediate would be, let's say seventh grade up to maybe 10th or 11th grade, depending on your level. And then advanced would be most likely someone that's um, a sophomore or a junior in high school up to and through college uh, and beyond. You know, your, your semi-pro players and your really top-notch players, um, whatever age, could be 80 years old, 60, 40, um, or you're a music major in school or you're just a really good player, but you're likely probably 15 or 16 or older. That would be my guess. So you need to uh, pay attention. Uh, to these when it says beginning, intermediate, or advanced. So that's critical. Um, you don't need to get something that's going to be too hard to figure out and actually could cause you more harm than good. Like this one here is not going to be good for someone that's, you know, 13 years old. It's not going to be good. So just, um, I have it all spelled out for you, so it's very easy. You just have to read. Uh, here's another, here's a left, right. So this is an advanced lip buzzing tutorial. It tells you how long the tutorial is, and most of these are around $7. It's advanced, so you'd, you'd want to be in high school or, or further beyond that uh, and be a pretty good player to be get, getting these. Here's one pretty much for, um, I would say, for a lot of people, but it does have advanced on it. This is my cool tea, hissing, breathing, compression breath, and it, it includes a test. It's a quick little four-minute tutorial. It will help you develop the compression breath necessary for playing above the staff for all brass instruments. And don't let this fool you. Um, You'll see that it says trumpet lesson tutorials under under 10 bucks, but most of these are applicable to trombone, tuba, cornet, E-flat cornet, flugel, French horn, euphonium, baritone, um, trombone, if I didn't already say it, um, just about all brass instruments, most of these will be applicable. So I'm just going to go through, so hopefully something will strike your fancy. Uh, what else? This is for all musicians, including singers. You know, are you a male or female singer in your high school choir or just your church? Uh, this teaches you the basic correct breath for all wind musicians. Wind meaning coming, you use your air to make the music. That includes vocalists and clarinet players, flute players. Okay, we'll move right along. Now, this one is one that's under, in the under 20 category. It's a very in-depth, completely detailed tutorial about pedal tones all about pedal tones and actually how to use pedal tones to be able to increase your power and your range it's a 14 minute tutorial it is more it's 14 bucks this is a good one uh, mainly geared towards trumpet players in this one so i would just uh, for tuba and everybody else i would avoid this one this is mainly for trumpet claude gordon my way and so this one is a super duper tutorial. I use actually this one in most of my longer courses, like the 16 week course. In fact, let's talk about that. 
let's just pretend that you don't go back to school, guys and gals. It's the middle of April. Let's say you go back to school and you everything's hunky-dory, the virus is gone. Trumpet lessons for under $10. Sound too good to be true, right? Well, this is Kurt Thompson, TrumpetSizzle.com. And this past week, pretty much the first week of April, I've been trying to put together a bunch of tutorials that are short, quick, and easy for this time when a lot of you are stuck at home. And my motto is, if you're going to be at home, why not try to find the silver lining and practice a little bit more so that when society comes back to normal, you're that much better of a player. Is that too hard to follow? I hope not. <laughs> anyway, I put together some very, very quick and easy and short tutorials. Actually, the easy part is for some of them, but some of them are actually uh, difficult. So, but I outline that for you. So if you're looking here, uh, this is the um, new collection that I have on my site. And we're just going to go through there. In fact, I'm going to show you how to find it. Uh, let's just pretend that um, you're typing in my website instead of uh, whoop, instead of clicking on a link. So let's pretend that, uh, let's just say you were at YouTube. Because I'll put this up on YouTube. It'll be on Instagram and my Facebook. Let's just say you're here, you're kind of messing around, right? And uh, you're like, oh, okay. So I want to go to Kurt's site and check out these very cheap uh, trumpet tutorials. So you, you would type in trumpet sizzle.com boom now when you're here where do you go after that well what i would do is i would click the little bar here and especially if you're on your phone you'll see this it's it's up on everybody's um mobile version so you click that and then you go to all of uh kurt stuff now you could go down here too um th that that gets you there too but i would click all of kurt stuff and then I would click new because these are all brand new people just go to new. So it says it's just self-explanatory, right? Price low, high, old, new. You want new to old. If you click new to old, since I just literally put these up this week, um, the first week, well, first and second week of April of 2020, all these are going to come up and it'll be very easy to browse through these. So click this. Boom. And you get right back to where you were at the beginning of this video. And you can just browse through this. There's about a good, almost 20 of them. And um, now some of them, there's about four or five that are in the under 20 category because they're longer and more in-depth tutorials. But there's a good, um, I don't know, close to 20 that are under 10, 10. And most of these are $7. Hello. So if you're sitting at home, and you're just playing through some of those little small pieces that you see in pet band, you know, at your high school band, those little tiny, tiny, you know, rectangular sheets that are about uh, four by six or five by seven. And you're messing around with that. And you're going through a couple of scales and maybe you got some sheet music from your band and you've been doing that and you're kind of not really getting anywhere. You're, you're probably not even maintaining. You might want to think about getting some of these tutorials so you can at least be getting better. Again, if you're stuck at home, and let's face it right now, we're at the middle of April 2020, and schools across the U.S. get out at two different times. You have your schools that get out right at the end of May, and then you have your schools that get out at the middle of June. Which one are you in? It doesn't really matter, because do you think that they're going to let you go back to school here around May 1st? Well, let's just pretend that you do. Are you going to get anything done? No. So uh, my guess is you're not going back to school for the remainder of this year. And for those exceptions where I'm actually not right about that, what are you going to get done? You're not going to get much done. So my advice to you is to go ahead and take the initiative and start getting some of these devices. And obviously, um, you won't be getting within six feet of me to get these. And you can still get better. I spell it out pretty clearly in these tutorials. They're very quick and easy tutorials. So we'll scroll through these very quickly and let you get on your way. Um, now, some of these are advanced. So let me repeat. Actually, this is not a repeat. Let me say this for the first time. If you're, you know, 13 years old and in seven, finishing up seventh grade, if it says advanced, like right here, it says advanced, don't get it. <laughs> 
you're not going to be happy. This is going to be too difficult for you. So beginning beginner videos, I would assume you're probably fifth grade up to about um, maybe seventh grade. Uh, intermediate would be, let's say, seventh grade up to maybe 10th or 11th grade, depending on your level. And then advanced would be most likely someone that's um, a sophomore or a junior in high school up to and through college uh, and beyond. You know, your your semi-pro players and your really top-notch players, um, whatever age, could be 80 years old, 60, 40, um, or you're a music major in school, or you're just a really good player, but you're likely probably 15 or 16 or older. That would be my guess. So you need to uh, pay attention uh, to these when it says beginning, intermediate, or advanced. So that's critical. Um, you don't need to get something that's going to be too hard to figure out and actually could cause you more harm than good. Like this one here is not going to be good for someone that's, you know, 13 years old. It's not going to be good. So just, um, I have it all spelled out for you, so it's very easy. You just have to read. Uh, here's another, here's a left, right side. So this is an advanced lip buzzing tutorial. It tells you how long the tutorial is, and most of these are around $7. It's advanced, so you'd, you'd want to be in high school or, or further beyond that uh, and be a pretty good player to be get, getting these. Here's one pretty much for, um, I would say, for a lot of people, but it does have advanced on it. This is my cool tea, hissing, breathing, compression breath, and it, it includes a test. It's a quick little four-minute tutorial. It will help you develop the compression breath necessary for playing above the staff for all brass instruments. And don't let this fool you. Um, You'll see that it says trumpet lesson tutorials under under 10 bucks, but most of these are applicable to trombone, tuba, cornet, E-flat cornet, flugel, French horn, euphonium, baritone, um, trombone, if I didn't already say it, uh, just about all brass instruments, most of these will be applicable. So I'm just going to go through, so hopefully something will strike your fancy. Uh, what else? This is for all musicians, including singers. You know, are you a male or female singer in your high school choir or just your church? Uh, this teaches you the basic correct breath for all wind musicians. Wind meaning coming, you use your air to make the music. That includes vocalists and clarinet players, flute players. Okay, we'll move right along. Now, this one is one that's under, in the under 20 category. It's a very in-depth, completely detailed tutorial about pedal tones all about pedal tones and actually how to use pedal tones to be able to increase your power and your range it's a 14 minute tutorial it is more it's 14 bucks this is a good one uh, mainly geared towards trumpet players in this one so i would just uh, for tuba and everybody else i would avoid this one this is mainly for trumpet claude gordon my way and so this one is a super duper tutorial. I use actually this one in most of my longer courses, like the 16 week course. In fact, let's talk about that. Let's just pretend that you don't go back to school, guys and gals. It's the middle of April. Let's say you go back to school and you everything's hunky dory, the virus is gone, we're good to go, and you're gonna start in the middle of August. It would really be a shame for you not to get involved in my 16 week course because you can get involved now. You don't have to have any other um, extracurricular playing and ensembles that will make it hard for you to recuperate. Really, this is a, another silver lining of this virus. If you're at home or if you're older, let's just say that you're not in school, but let's say you're 50 years of age and, and um, you have to work from home or, or you're just mainly homebound, uh, you really owe it to yourself to get into the number one rated course for embouchure strengthening, and that's by a 16-week course. And uh, I mean, it's just a no-brainer. April to middle of May, middle of June, middle of July, hey, middle of August. Do I got perfect timing or what? You could take the 16-week course and you'd be completely done with a new set of chops and three or four notes higher than where you play now, better tone, everything better by the time you start school or for people who are older, by the time your ensembles will be, get, be getting going probably right after Labor Day. So but anyway, you can test out some of these tutorials before you invest more money and more time. And so this is another good way to do that. Here's a beginner warm up. So if you're a pimply faced 12 year old kid or 13 or 
or maybe you're an adult beginner, this would be perfect for you. So 10 minute video. Here's an advanced technique, the wear tone technique. I didn't put advanced on there, but it is advanced. So I probably got to go back and put advanced on that. Finger strengthening skills for trumpet. It also, these also work for tuba, valve trombone, euphonium, baritone, and French horn. It's not going to work for trombone. So um, if you want better coordinated, stronger and faster fingers, you might want to get this video. Vibrato. Want to sound more like a pro, more advanced. Maybe it'll um, be more attractive to the audience members instead of have a flat, boring, you know, sound as a lot of people do, even some professionals. I don't know why they do that, but they will play a solo and not really add the vibrato and it just sounds flat and boring. So you can learn vibrato on that one. Here's an advanced lip flexibility tutorial. And if you've never played trumpet, if you happen to stumble on this video somewhere, and maybe you play piano or some other instrument, and you've always thought it'd be kind of cool to check out trumpet, and someone gave you an old beater cornet or trumpet, uh, for $7, you can get this video. It will at least get you started on how to handle the horn, how to make your first sounds, what to do with the mouthpiece, how to do your lips. And that's a lot cheaper than if you had to get with somebody, right? Now you can't really get with somebody now because of what's going on with this COVID-19. But you know, if you were to get with an instructor to go, go over this with you, uh, you're, you're going to probably spend 40 or $50, right? Uh, let's see if you, unless you get some good college kid that can do it for, but they're still going to charge you 30 bucks. So this is a no brainer. If you are stumbled on this video and you'd like to see what it would be like to, to play trumpet, how difficult it would be or easy, you can get this video for seven bucks. Click two and it'll take you to maybe a couple more here um, of these. Roy Stevens, I have three right here that are amazing for I would say intermediate and advanced. Uh, this is not something that you probably want to do as a beginner. And I probably need to go by and, and put down maybe advanced or intermediate, but um, Roy Stevens isometrics, perfect for a ninth grader, let's say on up. Static and squeaks, good for ninth, 10th grader on up. Harmonic arpeggios, actually this wouldn't be bad for even someone that's in seventh grade, because you're not gonna hurt yourself by doing the Roy Stevens harmonic arpeggios. All these are good. And Roy Stevens and William Costello um, innovated all this stuff way back when, in the 1940s, I believe, in 50s, and even a little bit beyond. So um, I highly recommend these. Tongue, tongue arch would be good for anybody, you know. Uh, I think if you're 10 or 11 years old, you might have a difficult understanding of it, so I would kind of maybe bypass this for a little bit. But definitely, if you're an intermediate or advanced player, you got to and really need to learn tongue arch. And let's see, we got a uh, warm up for intermediate and advanced. Now, this is a long one, it's very thorough, and it's not seven bucks, it's in the 14. It's a very, it's a 21 minute intermediate advanced warm up. I do the warm up along with you, and you can just kind of model what I'm doing here. So, for intermediate and advanced players, um, this probably is more likely for people that are seniors in high school or in college or maybe um, older adult players that have been stuck. Have you been stuck? You know, have, especially if you're older, have you? can you look back at the last 10 years and see that you're still in the same spot that you were 10 years ago? You still have trouble making it through the end of rehearsal. You still can't play higher than an E flat above high C. You've been stuck there for 10 years. Um, stuck on a piece of music, stuck at a certain level. This will help you get through it. It's a, in a nine minute video and I have some certain strategies that will help you get unstuck and break through any sticking points that you have. Move down here. Here's an advanced warm up. Now this one is a not a full warm up. It's a quickie warm up for the advanced and professionals who don't have time to warm up. You know, they just got to the gig or you just got to a concert for whatever reason, you didn't have time to put in a half hour warm up. And this has a quick strategy for you to get warmed up in a kind of an emergency situation. Have you never tried lip buzzing before? Well, without having to come in contact with another human being, you can get this tutorial 
and be introduced into lip buzzing. Lip buzzing means no horn and no mouthpiece, just your lips. And if you haven't thought of doing that, I would highly recommend it because it's an integral part of um, your playing and the improvement of your playing is developing the strength in your lips, which is a little bit different than the strength in your corners and your cheeks and your embouchure. Intermediate lip buzzing, just like the name sounds, uh, you need to have spent a couple of months on the beginning lip business stuff first before you move on to intermediate. And then I do have a longer, more in depth, and then now this one's tough, an advanced uh, lip buzzing tutorial, and it's a little bit more. It's um, 14 minutes, 14 bucks. I don't recommend anybody get in this unless they've already had a decent amount of experience in lip buzzing let's say at least um, five or six months worth or more. Um, so don't, um, now you can get the whole collection if you want, but I would go one by one in order from beginning to intermediate to advance. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen, I got all these cool little tutorials and it doesn't cost you an arm and a leg. That said, an arm and a leg is going to get you a lot further. And that's this guy right here. It's the 10-year uh, anniversary of my upper register course. It's been completely revised, filmed in FHD, um, much better audio. Everything's better about this. It's just done a lot more professional. 85 techniques over four months. This one is worth the investment, and you actually have the time. If you have a few extra bucks, um, I have different versions that you can do this one with. Uh, Here's, uh, here's a new one I haven't talked about yet. I'll be doing a different video on this one. I now have a DVD version, and I'll be making a separate video showing you the DVDs and the box that it comes in for people who don't like messing around with them, um, downloads, and especially during this time, maybe you have a cabin or a second home um, that doesn't have internet access. Maybe you're up in the mountains, and this would be perfect because you can just put it in your DVD player. So uh, now this is a... I'm not going to go through all this, but just since we're on this page, um, this is something new I also haven't brought up on YouTube yet or to my folks on my roster. Or maybe I have. Maybe I show this one. But this allows you to get into my live weekly course that normally is $997 for the four-month tuition. It's a semester-long course, and that's the one where we – it's a real class. We meet each week. Um, in the past, some people have not been able to do it because of the cost. So I've turned this into a weekly deal. And you can work with me live each week through this course for $75. And in this way, the course has to prove itself to you uh, because you can quit any time. Now, the other folks um, that get involved in the the regular version of this, you have to send almost $1,000 up front. And I force you to complete the course. <laughs> I'm not going to give you a refund. You have to get in and uh, complete the course make a commitment and do it this one here you have you do have an out and the out is you take a week or two and for some reason if you decide that you don't like the course you don't like doing it then you can just bow out gracefully and you're done and uh, i i don't foresee that happening but anyway you you can do that the other thing about this version is here you will let the course prove itself to you each week you do one week you like it, you got a little bit better, you do the next week. You like the next week, so forth and so on, you get my point. Uh, for It's perfect for the skeptic. So, and also perfect for the person who doesn't have a thousand dollar wad um, to put down on the other version of this course. So anyway, we're gonna stop there because I'm not gonna go through, I got a lot of stuff to go through. I just mainly wanted to show you all the new stuff here that I got here, um, stuff that anybody can get. A homeless person could spend $7 on this. You know, some of these homeless people, you know, make $100 a day panhandling. So a homeless person could take a $5 bill and two ones and get one of these tutorials. That's how cheap this is. That's how affordable this is. So I'm Kurt Thompson. I hope you found this um, educational and a little bit entertaining. And who knows, maybe as I went through some of these, you heard about some techniques that you hadn't even thought of trying. And at least at the very least, by having watched this video, uh, maybe I will have turned you on to some things that uh, now you can think about and as far as getting better. You have to be at home. We're no, uh, no one's going to an ensemble tonight. No one's going to going to a band concert. You're not going, even you pros, you're not going to a gig. 
you're basically at home. Why not get better? Why, why not make the most of this? Look for the silver lining. The silver lining is we can do extra things to get better. I'm doing it myself. I'm, I'm working on some things myself. Um, I'm not going to tell you exactly what it is right now, but I'm doing some things myself to actually, you know, make me turn another corner and get better at my instrument. So we all should be doing that, taking advantage of this downtime and, and use it to practice more. Kurt Thompson, right up here, trumpetsizzle.com. By the way, that's me in the picture. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Okay, middle C, high C, and double C buzz, and that's the ultimate test in pure embouchure and lip strength. Notice I was doing the real lip buzz, so I wasn't doing the little puff out your thing that 8th graders do. No, I was doing the real lip buzz with an embouchure set, I lips rolled in, like I'm blowing into the horn. So make sure you're comparing apples to apples. What I did was the real lip buzz, free lip buzzing, like you got your armature set. So if you do this, that doesn't that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about real free lip buzzing, which requires an enormous amount of armature strength. And you can always just about count on the fact that you can buzz a certain note, it's likely you can play about an octave higher than that. Buzz a high C, you can probably play double C. Buzz a middle C, you can probably play high C. Buzz a double C, like I just did, you can probably play a triple C, which is true. So there is a correlation between your lip buzzing and your strength and what you do on the trumpet, what you do on any other brasses. It doesn't really matter, tuba, trombone, whatever. So um, embouchure strength is the most important thing the most important aspect of um, brass playing. Take it away and you really have little left. Little left. You might as well just become a singer. I mean, you really do. If you don't have the embouchure strength, you, you can't play, um, I don't know, maybe you can play um, in, your, in the low register, and that's about all you're going to get if you absolutely have no strength here whatsoever. Um, nothing really is going to happen on the horn. You could, you could be an um, Olympic swimmer with great lungs and air, um, no embouchure strength is going nowhere. So that, there you have it. And I will continue on um, with this brass improvement series right here. Hey, today we're going to be talking about chop strength or embouchure strength versus air. And um, it seems like every other day I'm getting an email from somebody um, with a counter point of view of, um, for myself about air. A lot of times you hear me say um, air is not the main thing that's going to get you your range and it's not the only thing and then people think that um, I, don't, I don't believe in air at all and that's not true. Um, but we really need to figure things out. If Now I love Don Jacoby and his stuff. Bill Adams is wonderful. In fact um, I do a little bit of his stuff in my four month upper register program the lead pipe buzzing and stuff like that. So, and then the other yoga breathing techniques. But air, my friend, if you work only on air and think that's the holy grail to ultimate endurance and upper register, you're going to fail. That's just the bottom line. And we're going to find out why today. In fact, I'm going to prove that air is not the holy grail to upper register. It really is lip and embouchure strength. And then the second to that would be how you compress your air. So that is a very important part of being in the upper register and playing that way, um, playing clearly in the upper register. So, um, and I'm not following a script here. I'm just thinking out loud. But um, you need to see a good up-close demonstration. That's why I have this camera so close. I want you to notice um, how much air I'm really taking in to be able to get in the upper register. And if you have half a brain, 
you're going to figure things out that um, you got to have the chop strength. You got to have the lip strength. Lip strength is a little different than your embouchure. I mean, than the muscles that surround here. Don't believe me? Watch some autopsies. It's pretty gruesome, but you're going to see that the musculature of the face right through here, our embouchure actually is different tissue than what you have right here. And so this is a little something different here that we want to work on to get stronger. You have to have lip strength to withstand the pressure of the air coming out. So yes, you do need to be able to have um, great air flow and to be able to really compress the air. That's the most important part. So even if you only had one lung, if you had the mechanism set up to really compress that air and everything was synced and coordinated, I'm sure that you could probably still play decently in the upper register and, and expand your range. I'm confident of that. And let's find out why that is. So uh, I'm going to put the mouthpiece up. First of all, I'm going to see if you can get the feeling of when I take a full breath. So here's a full breath. <sighs> okay, so you'll know when I'm taking a full breath. I'm sitting down, so you'll see that I have to do that. Now, if I take a partial breath, I'm, I'm not going to take a full breath. And by the way, this, is, this video is... Um, in lieu of me writing out a big email for my brass um, techniques improvement series I'm just basically it's going to be this video so you're not going to see a long email this is the next installment in the brass players improvement um, email series I do on Facebook so I'll um, just be watching this and take notes so uh, check this out and I'm going to try to make it clear when I do take a larger breath so you need to see my lips try to get it close I'm putting the mouthpiece up. I'm going to take about 20% air. Here we go. That's it. That's only 20%, folks. Now, I didn't exactly have the accuracy that I wanted because I didn't have the airstream pushing it forward. But that's pure embouchure strength. Let's do it again. I'm going to take about the same amount of air, about 20%. Here we go. It's only 20 I think I got up maybe around the triple F range, give or take. Um, wasn't a lot of air there. Now, I will put in a lot of a lot more air. So let me take in um, double that. Let's go up to about 50%. That's about 50. So I'm getting more sound out. And the air um, that I'm blowing through my chops is more air more quantity and it's actually a, probably a little bit faster of course now because I'm blowing more air that's activating um, all the muscle contraction here it's got to still um, stay sealed on the mouthpiece otherwise the lips would fly up and you're not going to be able to um, go up any higher so anyway that should be really clear let's just take another look at that um, not much air so here we go that's a big breath and let me let it all out Basically, you saw me playing a double G, that's a double concert F, on the trumpet with virtually no air. Did, did anybody check that out? I basically had hardly any air. And how loud was it? It came out about MF. So wait a minute. Now, let's go back to Don Jacoby. And um, we can even include Stamps and uh, some of these other guys, um, Bill Adams, uh, real big proponents. Even my hero, Bud Brisboy, real big proponent of um, his wedge breath. He was the he was the original wedge breath guy. Um, Shoe came after him. Bud, Boy, Bud Briswell is the original, the originator of um, wedge breath breathing, in case you guys didn't know that. And there's actually two versions. The Shoe version, Bobby Shoes, is a little bit different, more applicable to like real-time playing. But Bud Briswell, uh basically said his way of um, breathing, this wedge breath, was the reason he could play so high and um, um, tell you the truth that was I don't believe that's true <laughs> the guy had incredible chops and um, uh, I'm pretty confident that even if he had not um, only one lung or wasn't breathing as quite as good as he did in the wedge breath um, 
that he originated, he could still play very, very well in the upper register. He had a natural setup, and so I think he was trying to explain why he could play so well. Sometimes when players are born with natural leverage and a natural ability to really compress air, they're not quite exactly sure what they're doing. So they, they look to rationalize how they're able to do it. You can watch Maynard, um, one of the, the ultimate um, talent in upper register. His, just look at his face. He had, the nat- he had a natural setup. His teeth and everything was just perfect for being able to get the high velocity out um, to play in the upper register. Now, of course, he had to work. He had to practice, you know, not shortchanging that. But I think at some point he was trying to figure out how he was actually doing it. He had just this ultimate talent. I mean, he had the perfect leverage just built into a system that a lot of us have to work a lot harder to get. And sometimes we don't even get, um, you know, get to that level. So... Um, he, you can watch in some of his master classes that he really explains um, about his that he worked a lot on his breathing, and then he leans back. He's really big about bending knees and leaning back. And I'm going to tell you something. And uh, Maynard is also one of my heroes, just along with Bud. But they're trying to explain how they're able to play so easily and well the upper register when, in fact, they had just like the ultimate amount of talent to be able to do so a natural setup. Um, I'm confident that you can take in a big gulp of air and practice yoga, lean back, bend your knees, and you're not going to be sounding like Maynard. And you're not going to really get that much upper register. You're going to have to do something to strengthen this um, area up here in your face. You have to have the strength up here. There's just no question. And um, what do um, a lot of people tell you to do? Do long tones. Take stuff up an o- take stuff up an octave. Play in the upper register and really work on your airflow, and you'll get there. Uh, nope, <laughs> it doesn't cut it. It doesn't cut it. Now, it might for some people, some people who are already predisposed and have the natural great leverage in their in their face right here, their tongue. Maybe they got a small. If you have a smaller oral cavity, and you're using your tongue arch, you really can speed up there a lot faster. So. Um, I mean, there's a lot of things that really go into this to making um, natural leverage. So yes, the people that have gained a lot of range and can excel very well in the upper and extreme upper reg- register of any brass instrument, if they did the long tones, if they really worked on their breathing, if they played stuff up an octave, they might actually just get um, to where they wanted to be and where everybody wants to be, but mainly because they had already a predisposition predisposition for natural leverage and um, and a great um, um, compression ability just through their genetics. So um, the rest of us, uh, you're going to have to really be strategic about getting this strength. And unfortunately for most of us, not one method and not one technique is going to get you there. In other words, uh, you can't just do Bill Adams method and get there. It's going to work for some people, but will it work for you or me? I don't know. Um, Claude Gordon, love it. And I actually got something out of it, but is it going to work for you? I've, I've been teaching for a long time, and that Claude Gordon doesn't work for everybody. It works for me, and um, not ultimately, but you know, it did help me out at one point. So I love the Claude Gordon stuff. Uh, Roy Stevens, so uh, palming and all that kind of stuff. Will it work for you? It may, and it may not. Reinhardt, all these other methods that are out there. Cat Anderson is the, probably the, the toughest method to actually go through. So there's a whole bunch out there. Uh, the only question is, will it work for you? And those methods are successful for some people, but not for everybody. Of course, we already know why it's not successful for everybody. It's just fact. If one method was actually successful at producing... Um, gorgeous high notes and upper register abilities and endurance, then we would all only use that one method. Think about it. Let's use our brain here. If one method was that successful, we you wouldn't be listening to this right now and I wouldn't be talking about it. Everybody could just do it. So the fact of the matter is not one method is perfect for everybody. As a result, that's the whole nature of my four-month upper register course. Uh, there are 65 techniques, and these techniques come from um, every method you can think of. The bulk of it are actually my techniques, and I include a lot of breathing for compression and some other stuff. So you have to um, take the macro approach 
to really build in the strength. We don't know which one, which particular technique is going to do it for you. I'm confident that um, out of 65, 5 or 10 are definitely going to be the magic bullet for you. But what's the magic bullet for you? Don't know. And whatever it is, it won't be the same for me or the same for the next guy or gal. So you really have to use your intelligence here if you want to improve your upper register. And keep in mind, the I don't care what instrument you play. I don't care if you're a college professor or you're a comeback player or um, you're a hobbyist or you're a pro player, whatever. It doesn't really matter. What matters is you have to keep improving your range. You can't be subtle on your range, wherever it is at today. Because the more range you have, what happens? Even if you don't want to play double C's, um, classical guys out there, if you can play a double C, what happens here? Boom. The pressure comes off your lips when you're playing in the in the uh, Tessa tour that you normally play in, whether it's middle C up to maybe E's. So you don't, you don't have to... Um, have the desire to play double C's. It's just if you can play them in your practice, the pressure comes off here. You get a better sound, a bigger sound, and a lot more endurance. So let's take one more look and then I'm going to wrap it up here. Really the air is important. And to compress the air, you really have to arch the tongue in your mouth up, like you're saying N or E or T. Your tongue's actually like this. That is doing the arch like that and you're blowing the air from the back of your throat up and over the tongue and it comes out the aperture now that's great we got to have that air but if you don't have the super strong embouchure chops in the lip able to contract and hold that air into the mouthpiece all the air is just going to be useless for you and that's um, this brass improvement email series Hope you get a lot out of it. You're seeing a real good close-up of me, maybe too close. Let's take another look at the mouthpiece. So I'm putting the mouthpiece right on my chops and take a small amount of air. Okay? Not a whole lot of pressure there, really. And that was probably about 30% of my air capacity. That should prove a point. It should really prove a point that, yes, work on your air, but you need to focus a lot more on how to get this